Greetings subscribers and other curious persons. Welcome to another vlog inspired by the Goodreads Tuesday Talks group. This week's topic is books or series you would like to see continue or have a spin-off. Well, to start with things I'd like to see continue, uh, Misha Burnett's Book of Lost Doors series. Premise is there's another realm to this one. And the protagonist starts off with partial amnesia about his childhood because when he was very young, his parents bonded an otherworldly entity to him. So he's two very different people in one body. The series is, starts off with him trying to discover a little more about what happened to him, mostly instigated by people trying to use him to their own purposes. The whole metaphysics of it is very interesting to me, but a different world, creatures that have radically different perspectives. And these aren't just standard fantasy demons that have recognisable motives. These are properly different incomprehensible beings in some cases that have obviously they've got a goal but what exactly that goal is and the extent to which that goal is evil or good is hard for humans to comprehend the protagonist tells you how one bonded to him so two layers to his story Firstly, he has this creature that he calls Cat Skinner that he could use or allow to use his body that has different powers to him. It's stronger, faster, but also it's, very it's got a very alien morality. It's comprehensible enough the two of them can have conversations, but what it wants is different from what he wants to a certain extent he they both want to survive but it has different needs from him and so there are times when he can use it but that involves well if you give your body over to something that wants to survive but has no human morals then clearly when you come back to being in control potentially it will have done some things that a moral person wouldn't have done and also it doesn't think like a human being so sometimes it can fail at the simplest of tasks so it's not as simple as if someone attacks you, you hulk out and switch into this supernatural being that's stronger and faster, let it deal with the fight. There is a, the two of them have to exist in symbiosis. And also, at least to begin with, the two of them are the only ones who understand what it's like to be this being. So this kind of, friendship's the wrong word, but a kind of dependency there beyond the fact that both of them rely on the body surviving to survive but also there's a there's a complex metaphysic behind it that has a certain lovecraftian aspect to it and everyone knows i love my lovecraft but it's not the same flavor it's got the depth of cosmic dread it's got the incomprehensibility of lovecraft but the levity that comes into it isn't the levity you usually see in lovecraft of comic tentacles or 
bubbly fish voices. It's a weirder activity. I think this immediately springs to mind is the electric flock frog gun, which fires electrified frogs. And on one level, it's the very cartoon, a gun that fires frogs at people, and when they hit them, splat, they're shocked, and they've been hit by a frog. But it's also, it's, it's set into a visceral world. So the comedy of being hit by a frog that's carrying an electric charge is balanced by the fact that this gun takes a frog, applies electric charge at it, and fires it at someone. So it's horribly cruel to the frogs. So it's this blend of that's a ridiculous image with that's a horrific image, which gives the story weight without losing the speed of flow, without taking you into the depths of the gulag you get in Russian fiction. So that's the first one. Uh, second, the Division Zero series by Matthew Cox, which is a fusion of gritty cyberpunk. So environmental disaster have reduced the earth to a less than wonderful state. There are massive towering cities that are partially owned by megacorps and are run by highly militaristic governments. There are urban wastelands between them that have nomads of various different levels of morality. And there's cyberware and all the trappings of Gibson, Sprawl Trilogy, Bruce Sterling and so on, but also there are psionics, so people with telekinesis, telepathy, emotion control, and the lead character can see the dead if they haven't moved on and has the ability to affect them. So also it's got sort of ghost story aspect to it almost paranormal not it's not paranormal romance but paranormal fiction so again the two threads balance out the very materialistic world of cyberpunk where it's all about style over substance it's about having the piece of tech to solve your problem it's about living for today because all you've got is today. And in parallel with it, there's this growing sense of an afterworld that isn't the Christian one, that isn't a different one, that isn't immediately explained because you only see it through the lead character who only sees it through the slow aggregation of facts and suppositions from her interactions with spirits. So there is an afterlife there, but lots of tension between the religion, between religion, the scientific view of psionic powers, purely materialistic people who don't believe in certain psionic powers. So they can see telekinesis, but they can't see interacting with the dead. So they assume it's some kind of con job to cover something else, or just that the person's lying. So that, uh, Matthew Cox has already written a trilogy and then added a fourth book after people uh, called for it. So I'm vaguely hoping that he might carry on uh, doing those. Although uh, he does also write other books in the same world. 
So to an extent, that is one that's still continuing with spin-offs. So it's a book that I don't really have to hope will do it. It's doing it. <clears throat> Third, Grant Morrison's Invisibles series. A group of either terrorists or freedom fighters take on a metaphysical conspiracy to damn humanity. So they're using the tactics of a terrorist cell mixed in with the methods of magicians, sort of sorcerous, spell-using magicians rather than stage magicians. Although the line blurs because part of it is about winning the battle of minds. So some of the magic is tricks. Some of the tricks are actually magic. Morrison plays with all of the symbols and all of the moral questions. So at what point do you become part of the problem? If you're trying to stop a fanatical organization that wants to impose their view of reality on the world because your because a view of reality can force other people to act in a certain way how do you avoid becoming the problem by being the people who are imposing a different view of reality how do you actually create a world that isn't people imposing things on other people. It's uh, got based around a concept that I quite like of trying to create a world where even your enemies win. So it's a radical rejection of zero sum. But it's not, well, it is deeply philosophical series but it's not just a deeply philosophical series it's also a fast-paced thriller with kung fu action and guns and explosions next um boris and arkady strugatsky's roadside picnic which is the only pick that's a single book rather than already being a series. So I'd... Aliens or beings or something arrived on Earth a short, a length of time before the book is set and it isn't quite clear exactly how long. And they arrived, they ignored humanity. And when they left, areas of the world were different. The laws of physics were broken. And things that were in those areas when the aliens were there have been changed. So they are incredibly dangerous areas that governments have sealed away. But they contain magical stroke technological metaphysical artifacts as well that can have value purely for where they're from or can have value for what they can do. So the book follows a man who is an experienced scout in these regions, taking people into the one of the forbidden zones. And he's cobbled together a series of rules for how to interact with things and memorized a series of threats, such as a pipe where 
it's safe to walk down it one way, but if you walk down it the other way, you're torn to pieces in a way that can't be understood by people. So that is about him and the party of people he's leading into this forbidden zone and through it and their personal story. And one of the things I'm, as you probably expect, having heard my previous picks, interested in is the wider mystical stroke, metaphysical stroke, magical physics there. There is a change of the way the world works that's not comprehensible to humans immediately. This isn't that the area is highly irradiated, gravity is reduced by X percent, spreading out proportionally from this point or whatever. It's odd effects that don't make sense. So more about that, an explanation, exploration of what is going on. Is there a way to interface with that? Um, hmm. so moving on to spin-offs. Um, as I've said, Matthew Cox already writes in the same world, so that one's already got spin-offs. Um, spin-offs is a lot trickier. I mean, I, most of the books I can remember, I can remember them for the characters who the story was following. Books where there are a lot of characters I can remember who weren't always the focus of the story, mostly they're huge multi-volume epic fantasies like The Wheel of Time and the Malazan Book of the Fallen, where it's not so much that there are minor characters I'm interested in as that there are six or ten, whatever, characters who are each minor characters in each other's stories in some way. And their primary stories sometimes cross. So there aren't any spin-offs from that because it's sort of like the spin-offs are already there and each volume is to an extent a spin-off of a minor character from some of the other volumes. So I think possibly the issue comes from if a book is well written the author has put the right characters in the centre of the screen, as it were. So they'll tell the protagonist's arc and minor characters will have enough of a resolution that you don't feel you've missed out. So. For the books that are really memorable to me, they're memorable because I've picked the right characters to follow. For the books where there are bits missing, where a character's arc, minor character's arc, hasn't really been tied off in a way that's satisfying, most often that's happened in books that the major character's arcs didn't quite have that zing either, so I don't remember them. So I can't really think of any stories where there are minor characters that I'd really like to learn a lot more about. It's usually they're minor for a reason or there's already an explanation of what they did while they were off screen that's satisfying. Toodaloo!